Station, this is Houston. Are you ready for the event? I'm ready for the event. ACR, this is Mission Control Houston. Please call Station for a voice check. Station, this is Houston ACR. How do you hear me? I have you loud and clear. How me? Loud and clear. Thank you. Please stand by for opening remarks. Hello, I'm Kelly Poindexter, Chair of the Link STEM Ready Program and a Chemical Engineer. Today we're connecting with astronauts at the International Space Station, including our Link sister, astronaut Jeanette Epps. Please welcome Co-Chair Dr. Mamie Parker. As a marine and wildlife biologist, I'm so thrilled to welcome you. Connecting with astronauts in space, how cool is that? Here is the first question. Hi, my name is Armia Crutchfield. What is the most spectacular view you have seen in space? Well, currently um, on the station, we have a window called the uh, cupola. And you can look out that window anytime and you could see the Earth. And I thought that was the coolest thing that I had ever seen until we saw the eclipse from the space station. And what we saw from the space station was a shadow moving across the Earth's surface. And it was spectacular. So that has probably been the most spectacular thing I've seen since being here. But every day looking out the window is a pretty amazing day. My name is Jalen Travis. My question is, how often do you speak with your family while on the space station? Well, with today's technology, I talk to my family every day. So we have software that allows us to see and talk to our family just about any time. We can even use Teams to have a Teams meeting with my family. So they can actually call me through Teams. So we have um, constant contact with our family members. So being here isn't you know, it's so bad. You know, we have um, our family nearby. Um, we can chat with them just about any time. Hi, my name is Frank. And the question I have for you today is, does the space station orbit in a circular motion? And if not, why? Well, we are in essentially a, a circular orbit. So, um, you know, that's the, the answer to the question. We have almost an eccentricity of one. So um, our circular orbit is the most efficient for us at this time. Hi, my name is Ayla. And my question is, how much time per day do the astronauts spend on research and experiments? Well, that's a good question because some days we don't spend any time. We spend time taking care of the space station, which is actually um, a big, ex floating laboratory. So sometimes we have folks go outside and they conduct spacewalks to fix the space station. Sometimes they go out to set up an experiment. But on the inside of the space station, same thing. Sometimes we're setting up experiments. Sometimes we're taking care of the space station. And we would spend probably six to six and a half hours a day doing that. Hi, my name is Aloy, and my question to you is, how do you sleep in space? Do you lie down, or do you float without being tethered? <laughs> That's another great question. Well, we have um, our crew quarters, which is our, our single room. We each have our own room, and we have a sleeping bag in there, and the sleeping bag is tethered to the wall. So we sleep inside our sleeping bag, which is tethered to the wall, and we float in our sleeping bag. <laughs> And we have crew members that <laughs> are doing work currently. <laughs> Hi, my name is Abdi. And the question I have for you is, what is your favorite space food? Oh, that's a great question. Um, you know, um, they, we have stuff um, that just about any kind of food that you can think of. Um, we have um, my favorite happens to be this um, cashew chicken curry. That's one of my favorites. But I also like to have just peanut butter. You know, peanut butter on the type of bread we have is we have a wheat bread. We put it on the bread. We have we can make peanut butter and jelly sandwiches if we want. So you know, daily I have different things. Um, yesterday I had honey ginger fish, which is very good. 
but my favorite still is the um, uh, cashew chicken curry. Hi, my name is Darius, and my question is, how many spacewalks are planned, and what is the duration for each? Uh, that's a great question. We have about three spacewalk pl um, planned in the month of June, and each one, the time can vary. It can even go up to over seven hours if needed. So every time someone goes out, you know, we plan for six hours, but really the suits can go up to seven and a half hours. So we'll see how long they go. Hi, my name is Hezekiah Harris. And when the astronauts are on the space station, what is the protocol to prepare for a spacewalk? So on Earth, we practice spacewalks using a giant pool to simulate micro G. So the pool is about 100 feet long, 200 feet, um, well, 200 feet long, 100 feet wide, and 40 feet deep. And that's because in water, you can practice being buoyant, um, neutrally buoyant, that is. And so in space, you know, we exercise every day to get ready to go outside. But just being in space and learning how to, your body adapts to weightlessness will help you when you're in the suit. But exercise every day is one way. Um, preparing the suits and understanding the operations, like reading the procedures, looking at the tools, practicing using them. So there's a lot of things that go into preparing. We have to charge the batteries, we have to get the suits clean, the suits sized, and uh, there's uh, several other things that we need to do on the road leading up to an EVA. Hi, my name is Austin, and my question is, how many hours per day do you spend in the gym while in space? Well, you know that we exercise because, we, you know, that's one of the countermeasures that we use for bone loss and muscle loss so that when we return to Earth, we can, some people actually return with virtually no bone loss and or muscle loss. There's always some, though. And so we spend about two and a half hours every day exercising, either doing some cardio for about 30 to 40 minutes, and well, either the stationary bike or the treadmill, but we all use the ARED. It's an advanced resistive exercise device that can simulate lift weightlifting. Um, we can do squats, deadlifts. We can do Romanian deadlifts. And we can do um, mainly the exercises that load the major bones in your body. We can even do upper body work on the um, ARED is what we call it. Hello, my name is Peggy Carr, and my question is, what new traditions do astronauts have in space, or what old traditions do astronauts keep in space? Well, each team, each crew seems to have their own special traditions. We haven't figured out, out ours yet, but, you know, we still have time. We've got about three and a half months to go. But, you know, one of the things that we did when we boarded was that, um, and we had to take our crew photo together, we all got out our crew notebooks, and each crew member signed it. And that way we know who we flew with when we look back later. Everyone who signs the crew, uh, our crew notebooks, are the people that we've flown with. And that's one of the traditions that I love. Hi, my name is Damani Gray. What are some of the psychological exercises or strategies used by astronauts to help cope with the challenges experienced during long duration space missions? Well, we don't really have exercises that we do. We do track our cognition throughout the flight. Like, you know, you could have um, several things going on and your cognition can go down. So, and we don't really understand how an astronaut's cognition changes during flight and why. And so we do more cognition tests rather than psychological tests at this time. But, you know, most astronauts are, you know, you're selected and your demeanor is part of that selection. You know, how adaptable are you? How flexible are you? How um, have you, um, how do you deal with stress? How do you cope with um, things happening? And so your life is um, kind of will be, in some cases, indi indicative of that. Like if you've been to a war zone or if you've served in the military and different things like that, that can um, be an indication of how you deal with stress, how you deal with difficult times. So we don't really do psychological exercises here at this time. Hi, my name 
is Lark Smith. My question for you is, how are lights and other utilities powered at the International Space Station? Well, that's a great question. We have, um, if you uh, take a look at a photo of the International Space Station, you'll see these giant kind of brown, orange looking um, panels. Those are our solar arrays. We have eight primary solar arrays that produce a lot of power to power all the equipment that you see behind me and all the wires. And, but we also have a new smaller arrays that are um, new generation that are a little bit more efficient that each produce about 20 kilowatts of energy. So in total, once we get um, uh, everything up and running, we'll be able to produce about 215,000 kilowatts. 215 kilowatts of energy. So that's a lot of energy. So the solar array wings, it tracks the sun and it, trans, um, it turns the sun's energy into electricity for us so that we can use it on board to power everything that you see. Hi, my name is Kamara Lee Williams, and do you need as much sleep on space, and how do you regulate the amount of sleep you get each day? Well, it's, sleep varies for everyone. And so in general, like for me, when I first arrived, my body was really changing, and it's, it's still changing to a certain extent. But that change, it's like, you know, little kids, you see how little kids can eat a lot and they play a lot and then they sleep. They sleep really soundly, especially during the times where their bodies are changing. And that's what I think was happening with me. Early on, I slept as many hours a day as I could once I got my work done. But now, you know, I kind of feel like I've been I'm here. I've been here about a little over two and a half months. And I feel like it's, you know, we're kind of adapted and I sleep regularly. You know, sometimes, like even on Earth, you don't sleep as well. You may have um, exercise too close to sleep, and it keeps you awake at night. So different reasons, you know, my, my sleep changes. But uh, the space environment has not uh, really changed that much after I've adapted. So, and now I'm in a regular sleep pattern. Hi, my name is Mariah, and my question for you is, what time is it on the space station? And is there a separate time zone for space? Ha, huh, that's a great question, a separate time zone. We actually don't have a separate time zone. We follow the Greenwich Mean Time, GMT, GMT time. It's the same time in London as it is on the space station right now. So that's a great question. <laughs> Hello, my name is Josiah Walson, and my question is, how do you keep the specimens resulting from the tests and experiments viable during the duration of the expedition? Well, Josiah, by specimens, um, it de depends on what you mean by specimens. If we have um, live animal specimens, um, we keep them alive the same way we would on Earth. You know, you have to feed them, give them water every day. Um, they have um, a little area they can actually play in if that's necessary. Just little things like that, especially for small specimens that we have. Um, other than that, um, we really, I'm not sure the other types of specimens you may refer to, but um, the animal specimens, they're kept very well and um, healthy. And then they return back to Earth healthy, and the experiment is ended once they land on Earth. Hi, my name is Kennedy Henry, and my question is, how does weightlessness affect feelings of fatigue and endurance? Well, weightlessness, um, what initially happens, your body has to adapt to the environment. So, like I was saying earlier, um, as my body was adapting, I felt fatigued. And so I get all my work done in a day, and by the end of the day, um, I could feel the fatigue and I would sleep probably um, here. I probably have slept eight hours straight, nine hours almost. And that's unusual for me. So now that I'm adapted, I sleep kind of like the regular hours that um, I did when I was on earth. And so feelings of, of fatigue and endurance. So endurance is another um, thing. You know, with all the exercising that we do, we can um, extend our endurance through our exercise. Um, doing cardio and then weightlifting every day will help with that. 
Hi, my name is Braylon, and my question is, how does NASA decide which experiments and research will be conducted by the space station crew? Well, there's um, several ways that they do that. I mean, we work with our international partners to figure out um, all the experiments that people want to conduct. And then from the, that um, slew of research that, say, our colleagues in Japan want to conduct or over into the, with the European Space Agency or even Canada. So figuring out that, you know, there's a group of people that go through all the experiments and see if they're even viable to, to conduct in space. Conducting research in space is very different than con conducting it on Earth. There's a lot of similarities. Similarities, don't get me wrong, but you know, when you develop a, uh, an experiment for space, there's several things that have to be considered. Like for example, how do you package the experiment? How does, if there's fluid involved, how will the fluid um, behave in space in order to conduct the experiment? And then just, having um, items that are tethered to the table so that they don't flo float away. So when you package everything together, um, you know, you have to consider these things. And so when experiments are presented, you know, there's a lot of factors that go in into selecting uh, experiments that can be conducted su successfully on the space station. Hi, I'm Wendelin Washington. And today was nothing short of amazing. Chatting with astronauts in space, mind blowing, right? Before we close, I wanna thank those brilliant students from all over the country who participated and for the leaders, Ms. Poindexter and Dr. Parker and their phenomenal teams. Thank you. Oh, thank you, ladies. Thank you for everything that you're doing for the students. Station, this is Houston ACR. Thank you. That concludes our event. Thank you. Thank you to all the participants. Station, we are now resuming operational audio communications.